Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Today we will we'll be talking about Chardonnay. Frank Smullers and I, we will continue with our wine talks and today's topic is Chardonnay. I am waiting for Frank to join so then I can invite him to the session. Let me see if Frank is here. Hello. Okay. Hi again, everyone. Today's topic is Chardonnay. Frank and I, we will talk about Chardonnay. And I'm waiting for Frank um, to join the session so then I can invite him and start talking about Chardonnay. Where are you, Frank? Okay, Frank is here. Uh, uh, Frank, uh, again, it's happening. I cannot add you to the call. Hi, Robin. Okay, now I can. Okay, now I Yes, you're there. <laughs> Hi, Frank. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Very good. And yourself? I'm good. It's Friday. Mm. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you can so um, this was your first week in the office or uh, I'm second I'm, uh, first but I'm not still work uh, from I'm not working from the office I'm still working from ah, home. okay yeah so okay. Um, due to the COVID situation at least until September we will be continuing really? to work from home yeah okay and yeah, then yeah. after September we'll see what's gonna happen sure yeah yeah so sure. <laughs> yeah okay yeah um, so Good. Today, Chardonnay. <laughs> yes. Is there anything we can say about Chardonnay that nobody knows? Um, maybe not, obviously, but mm -hmm. I think we can still talk a lot of things about Chardonnay, like sure. many different aspects of it. And also sure. maybe we can talk about like when uh, some people sh say that they don't like Chardonnay and what exactly they don't like. I mean, because... I mean, mm. I know what they yeah. don't like. You don't, yeah. The the old, yeah. <laughs> old no, they or? they don't like Chardonnay because too many other people like it. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, like the, the... it's a, it's it's a it's a form of reverse snobism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so... If you're a snob, you say yes. I I only like expensive Chardonnay. So reverse snobism is to say I don't like Chardonnay at all. Mm -hmm. And you only say that because you don't want... Uh, because it's difficult to say you don't like Chardonnay because I, I can imagine that you would say, I don't like New World Chardonnay, for example. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that you say that. Yeah. But to say that you do not like New World Chardonnay and also do not like uh, White Burgundy, mm -hmm. that's a bit crazy because they're two completely different, different wines. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. But, but, you know, but it's true. And uh, um, I mean... You know, every, a lot of people talk about ABC, eh? mm -hmm. anything ABC but Chardonnay. Chardonnay. But actually, the, 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 the truth of the matter is that uh, the majority in the world likes Chardonnay. It's the most planted white variety in the world. And, and you know what? It's still growing. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not going down. It's no. still growing. Yeah. So uh, to say that Chardonnay has had its best time, that is uh, quite besides the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like going back to like I don't look like Chardonnay phrase. Mm -hmm. I heard people saying that I don't like Chardonnay, but I like Chablis. So like it's also yeah. contradicting mm -hmm. in itself because Chablis is one hundred percent Chardonnay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. maybe it's because like in ni because of the the nineties, the bad influenced, uh, badly used old examples maybe kind of had this yeah. uh, I don't like Chardonnay thing. But, true, yeah, true. It's like, and also not in the only the dry wines, the style, yes, uh, New World and Burgundy is totally different. But also with Chardonnay, yeah. you can do many other things. You can do sparkling wines. You can also Definitely. do like Beautiful sweet wines. wines. Yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a very sort of versatile grape variety. 
And of course, what is very interesting about Chardonnay, and, and that is where it is completely different from Pinot Noir, that Pinot Noir, um, like Chardonnay, originates in Burgundy, is a cool climate grape variety by mm -hmm. origin. But Pinot Noir needs that cool climate. So you take it to a warm cli climate and it quite quickly gets boring and uninteresting. But Chardonnay, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, you may not like the Chardonnays from warmer countries. That's, mm -hmm. that's fair, that's possible. But you cannot deny that Chardonnay does well in warm countries and uh, though in a different style, is still capable of producing uh, beautiful wines in a warm climate. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking of a visit I did some years ago, I think it's seven years ago, to Kistler in uh, Russian River Valley. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Kistler is like the, the, the best, probably uh, seen as the best Chardonnay producer in, in California. At least his wines are the most expensive ones. Um, and they are great wines. They're, you cannot compare it with Burgundy, but they are great Very wines. Good, yeah. Yeah. And there's one comment here that's saying that Chardonnay can age so beautifully. Uh, true. That's true. But I've been thinking like great, really long lived examples in Burgundy Chablis. But do you have like a really long aging example somewhere else in the world, like Carneros, or not necessarily long enough as Bur Burgundy? Mm. I don't know. I mean, theoretically, we would probably assume that Burgundy ages better because of the acidity. Mm -hmm. But that's in theory. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, and, and probably it's true. I, th I would say that generally speaking, cool climate wines uh, age better than warm climate wines. And, but that doesn't mean that warm climate wines do not age because I do not have any experience, I think, with older New World Chardonnays, really older. Mm -hmm. But I do have experience with uh, older Napa Valley Cabernets from the 70s. They were, they were beautiful wines, beautifully aged. Very different from Bordeaux, but beautifully aged. Mm -hmm. So whether this would apply to, to Chardonnay, I cannot judge. And I think th there is probably not much old Chardonnay from the New World around. Probably not. So it's it's hard to to say by, by experience, right? Mm -hmm. But um, in a way, I would reckon that the best uh, Chardonnays from the New World are, will also be able to, to age. I'm, I'm pretty sure, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the other hand, um, thinking about uh, the aging potential of white burgundies, um, there's also something called Primox, which okay. uh, since 1995 has been quite an issue in, in, in white burgundies. Um, and uh, I think the worst is over with Primox, but we've had a, a, a period behind us where uh, many Burgundies didn't age at all, actually, white Burgundies. They, they well, Primox, I mean, premature oxidation, they turned brown and got oxidized. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a big issue, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It is actually a side topic, or like we can open a bracket. Mm -hmm. a Primox, do we exactly know what it, why it happens? Like there's theories that it's because of the phenolix and skin contact and it triggers more uh, pre-oxidation pre or is it that or yeah i i yes and there are many theories around it and um um i i, I cannot say that i know the truth i think nobody really knows no. but um but there are many theories around it and for sure um the first reason was uh changing winemaking methods with uh, uh, longer aging on the lease with uh, actually uh, Jean-Marie Guffens, uh, a famous uh, white burgundy producer, think that the change to biodynamics also had to do with it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure, but, but who knows? But, but um, I remember one thing, and that is that uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, a Norwegian master of wine called Arne Ronald did a, who was a Burgundy expert, he did some research on the topic and he actually uh, analyzed a number of bottles that had severe problems uh, together with Geisenheim University and the outcome was very clear. They were sulfured too low from the start. Sorry, sorry. And this is something that everybody in Burgundy has been denying, mm -hmm. but it's true. They were, they were having too low silver sorry, levels. Sorry. And... Um, um, and this and, and 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 then in combination with other things, you know, with maybe pH, which is a bit uh, 
too high, whatever, mm -hmm. you get problems, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you are bound to get problems. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's, it's again, Jean-Marie Huffens, because Huffens had huge Primox problems in the, in the late 90s, huge. I witnessed it from nearby because I was working for then at that time for the Dutch importer of Huffens. We had a lot of complaints of clients and I was writing in the press about the problem. And what typically happened was that Huffens, like all the other Burgundy producers, denied the problem. They said, there is no problem, whatever, you, you're mistaking reduction for oxidation. But basically, I think they denied the problem because they were afraid they had to take all the wine back. And, um, and Huffens actually took wine back at some stage. He had to. But he later on also said, you know, I, I realized later on that my sulfur levels were too, too low and I, I corrected that. Mm -hmm. So he admitted his mistake. But I think a lot of producers still refuse to admit uh, their role in the problem. Mm -hmm. It's always easier to put the blame somewhere else, of course, yeah. you know, because as soon as you say, I, I made a mistake, people will say, well, take it back. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know? exactly. and, and we're talking about a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, but then if you blame yeah. it to something else or to nature, then it's not your fault anymore. Then it's not your fault. Yeah, yeah exactly. And going yeah. back to the, um, the, the older versions, uh, there's a comment. Robin says that Old Stony Hill Chardonnays are really good. Sorry, Old? Old Stony Hill Chardonnays. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. They... I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know. I have no experience. But I'm, I believe in, absolutely. Somebody was also asking, I just saw, why did this not happen in Champagne, the Primox problem? Mm -hmm. But Champagne is a completely different wine. And Champagne, because of the fact that it has, um, has spent a lot of time for autolysis, becomes uh, quite reductive. Mm -hmm. And Champagne just doesn't need much... Um, uh, sulfur at all to survive mm -hmm. and I think sulfur levels in Champagne uh, basically not really changed a lot and even with very low sulfur levels there's not much risk with Champagne because of the the autolytic and because of the aging on the lees mm -hmm. um, so you cannot compare white burgundy with Champagne in that respect mm -hmm. yeah um, so now going back to Chardonnay again um, mm -hmm. so the, the fame of okay Chardonnay yes uh, we know that it is like it has a really good international reputation the consumers uh, concept, consumer perception uh, good or bad but it's like really very well known in mm -hmm. drinking uh, the grape is preferred for winemakers and uh, growers but like yeah is it fame? It is. It, it's fame. Did it happen because of the varietal labeling in in New World? If so, why it didn't happen to the other grapes? Then it happened to Chardonnay. Like all of a sudden, became so. Mm, very it's a good well question, known. but I, I think I think it's for two reasons. I think uh, in the high end uh, of wine, mm -hmm. um, what Chardonnay does is that it. Um, quite easily on different soils in different climates delivers high quality. You know, with careful winemaking and using great oak and whatever, it is not that difficult to make a really good Chardonnay. So it's, it's a grape that quite easily delivers in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. And the second reason, and then we talk about the other part of the market, um, I think the taste of Chardonnay as we know it from the supermarket shelves, you know, and that's, that's mostly New World or Southern Europe, uh, pay dog or, or whatever is a taste that is very easy to appreciate by everybody mm -hmm. because at the end of the day chardonnay is a neutral variety and um, um and i'll tell you one thing talking about neutral varieties uh, uh, if we compare with sauvignon blanc which is of course not a neutral variety it has in a way much, has a much more aroma um but i i bet that there are more sauvignon blanc than chardonnay haters in the world the Chardonnay haters, that's a very small group of people, you know, the, the posh sommeliers and whatever who want to show that they've got a better taste than the rest and they don't like Chardonnay. But Sauvignon Blanc is a taste that not everybody appreciates. The sort of green flavors and aromas of, of Sauvignon Blanc. I know plenty of people who do not like Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you could say that Chardonnay is easier, just easier to drink, easier to understand. And for that reason, has a huge appeal to very many people. Mm -hmm. And finally, third reason, I said it before, but Chardonnay seems to do well wherever you go. I, I sometimes make a remark that there is probably not one wine 
country in the world, from the smallest to the most important, where you will not find Chardonnay. Chardonnay. I cannot imagine one. I never found one. Mm -hmm. Even in Sweden, there is Chardonnay for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. And that's not a wine country. Mm -hmm. But in the Netherlands, there is Chardonnay. In Belgium, there is Chardonnay. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, it's also profitable because it is like you can make good sure. quality Chardonnay even it is high, when it is high yielding. Sure. So sure. It is, Absolutely. Yeah, it is like a very like easy cash flow for the producers as well. Sure, 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 sure. I mean, there, there's always the there, there was always the discussion. You know, what is the best white white wine grape? Is it Chardonnay or is it Riesling? You mm -hmm. know, it's an old discussion. Chardonnay. And a lot of Riesling of well, a lot of <laughs> Riesling aficionados will say it's the Riesling because mm -hmm. Riesling doesn't need oak. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. um, but I think at the end it's completely a matter of personal taste but if you look at it from the point of view uh, on how easy it is to make uh, uh, really good Chardonnay uh, in different places then you could say that Chardonnay has more quality to offer than Riesling mm -hmm. because Riesling is very picky to where you to where you yeah. put it, to where you produce it. Huh? I mean, I personally love Rieslings, and I think, I mean, Rieslings... Yeah, uh, me too, can, no doubt. You can age Rieslings for decades and decades, and a good Riesling, I think, ages more longer, longer than Chardonnay. But I think True. to understand, like, if it is the best grape, Chardonnay or uh, Riesling, I mean, I think mm -hmm. also you need to make uh, some sort of SWOT analysis, no? to think about like strengths, threats, and Riesling is still undervalued. And it is, as you said, it's mm, not really, it is. Uh, you cannot really grow Riesling everywhere. And so, no, certainly not. Certainly take... not. And, and, mm, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, certainly, certainly. And, and, but, but not everybody likes the taste of Riesling. I have people around me who do not like Riesling, you know. Mm -hmm. So don't think that everybody likes Riesling. It's not true. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't like high acidity, if you don't like maybe a hint of sweetness, as you will, st will, st will still find in plenty of Rieslings, then you may not like Riesling. If you don't like petrol aromas, then you may not like Riesling. Mm -hmm. So I, I love Riesling and you too, and there's no doubt about it. It's a, it's a fantastic variety, but not everybody is a Riesling drinker. Mm -hmm. So so why is Riesling less pop, much less popular? Because A, not everybody likes it. B, you cannot produce it everywhere. Yeah. It's more picky. Yeah. And, and it is um, less accessible, yeah. obviously. And then the, it's not as profitable as uh, Chardonnay. So the the much like the, it's not chardonnay is always you can find much cheaper versions of chardonnay than riesling uh, depending yes on the absolutely really cheap rieslings yeah. as well but not as good quality from germany yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah but you know that they are genetically linked huh? they've got the same uh, parents do they so uh, yes they do because uh, pinot noir is a is a crossing uh, sorry chardonnay is a crossing between pinot noir and Gouet Blanc. Mm -hmm. And Riesling is a crossing between Hoynish and a second variety that probably doesn't exist anymore. But Hoynish is the German name for Gouet Blanc. It's exactly yeah. the same variety. Yeah, okay. And actually, inter interestingly enough, the Gouet Blanc or Hoynish is a very simple variety. And actually, in the German language, Hoynish is already pointing out that it's not very good because Hoynish means from the Huns. Mm. And since the Huns had a very bad reputation, <laughs> <laughs> it was considered something evil to be Hoynish. Wow. Yeah, that's really true. Wow, it's really true. I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah. So interesting that they both have one parent in common, uh -huh. uh, and the quality of that parent is not so great. Uh -huh. Wow. And, I, and actually, they... this, and, and this variety is parent to many other varieties, uh -huh. including Furmint, for example. Oh, really? Wow, interesting. But yeah, yeah, then, well, at least there's a link. There's yeah, a link. And yeah. then, but then, I mean, even though the parent is not really great, gives really great grapes, great quality kids. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 But also the, the different clones uh, makes, uh, plays a big difference, no? Yeah, but, but probably, probably even more with Chardonnay than with yeah, Riesling, Riesling, you know? Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, I think in Chardonnay you have a lot of commercial clones and uh, plenty of them are, of course, high-yielding clones used for, let's say, average pay-doc qualities or um, or maybe, um, well, any, any, any sort of high-yielding whatever wine uh, made in the world for Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the clonal variation is more important for Chardonnay than for Riesling, mm -hmm. I think. 
Uh, today I was yeah. thinking of also different uh, the, um, examples of Chardonnay uh, from dry, sparkling sweets. I was thinking mm -hmm. if there is a really well, well known or good botrytis example, but I couldn't mm -hmm. really uh, name any, any, anyone. Is there a really good uh, noble rot botrytis Chardonnay? That we know not not no. much not much um i think in austria there will be some people who sometimes make an, uh, a noble rot chardonnay and i remember there was one guy in the macone who used to make uh, slightly sweet chardonnays with a bit of botrytis i forgot the name it was quite well known but there's not much of it no i'm, I'm not sure why um uh, whether the chardonnay isn't very prone to botrytis or whether it's just a sort of stylistical choice for mm -hmm. Chardonnay makers. I'm, I'm not sure, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, how prone the Chardonnay mm -hmm. variety is to, to botrytis. Because the skin but is there's not, not much very food. thin, Chardonnay. Mm, no, like, probably not. Yeah. No, no, mm -hmm. no, no. It's true. Yeah. No. Mm, also Chardonnay, uh, varietal or blend? You can have mm -hmm. varietal examples, but also it's a great partner in blending. Well, it's true, and what, but, but of course, what you, I mean, there are, I cannot, apart from from sparkling wines and with the obvious Chardonnay Pinot Noir blend, but in still wine, I cannot really imagine any wine based on Chardonnay that that's getting better by mm -hmm. the fact that you blend in another variety. It's always the opposite, I mm -hmm. believe. You take a local variety, you blend in Chardonnay, and the wine improves. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of um, um, the tasting I did earlier this week with Pares Balta. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, your, your neighbors in the Pinedes. Mm -hmm. And um, they're not far from Torres. Yeah. And um, um, we tasted a, a wonderful Cava, mm -hmm. um, which was made with 81% Charello, and uh, 19 percent chardonnay and pinot noir mm -hmm. and and you know uh, we talked about it that of course charlo is a fantastic variety and we all want growers in the world to use as much as possible the local varieties and i agree with that generally speaking but you cannot deny that by adding chardonnay and pinot noir you can improve your charlo mm -hmm. it's not it's not typical i know but it's the, these two varieties are so damn good that they will help the charello. Sure. Um, yeah. And at also, a lower level... Huh? Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. And no, no, I was just level? thinking that... Uh, well, cheaper wines, like, like they do in... in, in uh, uh, I don't know, in the south of Italy, Sicily, where they blend Grillo with Chardonnay. Yeah, well, the wine gets better because Grillo is not that great, you know. And so a bit of Chardonnay gives the wine a bit more fruit. And of course, it helps to sell the wine also, mm -hmm. just by having the name Chardonnay on the label. Obviously. It helps. No, I was yeah. thinking uh, one example that maybe Chardonnay adds uh, an advantage to other grape. Can you see examples of blending with a Semillon? No, well, that's Australia, no? Mm -hmm. Semillon Chardonnay. Yeah. Australia. Yeah. But you know, I think they do it to get rid of the simillon. To be, uh, to, oh, yeah? be to be honest, <laughs> yeah, because I think yeah, it's not so easy to sell pure simillon. Mm, yeah. So if you blend it with chardonnay, you make a nice blend. You've got chardonnay name on the label. Mm -hmm. It helps to sell. Yeah. So I, I think it's another example of chardonnay helping to sell so. the other variety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, mean, I, I don't think those two grapes are very complementary. By the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, if an, if an, if you're like a new emerging uh, producer and trying to make a name, and then you can always mm -hmm. add Chardonnay or Cabernet Sauvignon, you can always make your sure. name. Yeah, it is always. I mean, yeah, I think that's also definitely. another pros of the grape. When we talk about the grape, not only winemaking and viticulture aspect, but I think the sales and marketing aspect is really important. In the end, all definitely. the wines are made definitely. to be so sold. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking of Spain, actually, because, of course, in Spain, we like to talk about uh, the native white varieties from Spain, Charello and mm -hmm. Albariño and Godelio. Mm -hmm. But two of the most successful white wines of Spain in the high end are Milmanda mm -hmm. from Torres yeah. and uh, Collection 125, 125, mm -hmm. the Chivite, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. which is a very famous white wine, very well made, and it's a barrel fermented Chardonnay. Yeah. So also in Spain. Yeah, yeah interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. although Spain normally has a climate like, I mean, I think if you compare it to California, France, Australia, the percentage of Chardonnay is more than it is in Spain because in Spain it ripens really mm. early. But even though yeah. given like less limited plantation, you have really like the iconic wines based on Chardonnay. You're right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And also yeah. we have amazing Vignasol. Which is Chardonnay. Sorry? Vignasol. It's also is... Chardonnay. Is it hundred percent Chardonnay? Uh, there's a there's an uh, Macabeo, I think, in the blend. And Parayada, I think, as well. well. Yeah, not hundred percent. Yes, I think. I think it. Chardonnay. It used to be actually because we always have the Vignasol uh, for ages in the Wine Academy uh, mm -hmm. in Austria as the first white wine in the Spanish lecture, mm -hmm. which I've been doing now for fifteen years. And in the and we always start with Vignasol. Mm -hmm. And I remember that fifteen years ago it was a hundred percent Parayada, but mm -hmm. now it doesn't mention the varieties anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's probably a blend now. Yeah, it's yeah. a blend now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think we covered a lot of aspects of Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is the best Chardonnay you ever drank? What is the best Chardonnay I have ever drank? Uh, I'm thinking um, maybe like most probably uh, Burgundy's. Uh, mm. I remember doing a uh, tasting in 2000. Uh, 16, I think it was. I uh, attended mm -hmm. to um, uh, at Satovis, like Burgundy tastings, but obviously, like ah. it was like a really drop of Burgundies, and I drank yeah, yeah. Romane Conte there. Um, yeah. So I think this, and also, uh, Domaine Lerot, they had like an amazing shot. I think Monache was. It was, yeah, it was like sure. one of the top uh, Chardonnays I ever had. But I also mm. like really enjoy a lot uh, the Chablis. Sure. The Grove Chablis, for example. Sure. Domaine yeah, Domaine no, Domaine sure, Domaine. sure. Uh, yeah. I think it's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, no, but that's no, no, definitely. I love Chablis actually, and uh, if you got Chablis from the top producers, that's that's really great wine to drink. Mm -hmm. um, but it's true that probably if you think of the best Burgundy, uh, sorry, the best Chardonnays in your life, you you will end up with Burgundy. But but still, nevertheless, I, I would say from my point of view, it's more Burgundy than than other wines. Mm -hmm. But I would include the best of California, indeed Kistler. It's an amazing wine in a very different style, very, very, Kistler is, uh, of course, richer, a bit fatter, a mm -hmm. bit lower in the acidity, but beautifully made, very focused, very pure and precise wines and mm -hmm. well, one, wonderful wines. I mean, crazy expensive, as expensive as Burgundy, actually, yeah. but... Uh, but really good, you know. And I also remember uh, from the times that we didn't mind so much about a bit of oak. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember um, Roxburgh Chardonnay from uh, Rosemount in the years, in the time that Rosemount was still a very good producer. These days are over now. But um, Roxburgh Chardonnay, that was it. That was really a beautiful Chardonnay yeah, from I Australia. And I've tasted I'm other very good Chardonnays with from that Australia. One. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, from Australia, ones, yeah. also there's a big uh, there are, uh, different styles as well, like South, Southern Australia and then New South Wales and Ta Tasmania. It's like a very different uh, expressions of Chardonnay. True, true. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And always, always uh, champagne <laughs> when you say, uh, I, yeah. like when you said, what is your best Chardonnay that you have ever drank? Yeah. I was like directly thinking of still wines, but then... Obviously. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah, salon. I mean, salon, mm -hmm. champagne salon. That's probably one of the best. Also, one of the best chardonnays in the world. But now, um, um, a champagne. Mm -hmm. Great, great wine. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and we have um, a question, Janet. There are chardonnay clones which have a slight muscat note. You knew that. Do you know that? No, no. Sorry, clones that have a slight muscat, muscat note. note yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, no, I don't actually. 
But it's interesting. Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, yeah. Uh, someone else is um, commenting about the same taste, the same same thing. Some growers use Chardonnay Muscat, but it's not on the label. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Well, yeah, maybe. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It makes the wine a bit more floral. Yeah, maybe. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. But talking yeah. about floral, again, I'm going back to the, the taste of the wine. I, I mean, Chardonnay, I, I never get bored of it. Like, I can always no, go no. from Chardonnay and try something else, but I can always come back to Chardonnay. You know, it is one sure. of the, I think, like, very few grapes that it happens. Yeah. Yeah. No, true, true, true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so Good. much. Good. Perfect. Well, it was a pleasure. We haven't defined next week yet. yet huh? yeah. uh, I, I've been th I was thinking about Riesling, but we already talked a bit about Riesling yeah. now. But we we'll, we'll think about it over the weekend and, and publish. Something. Okay. Yeah? So the next, uh, our next talk will be next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. yeah? we're, we're going back to once per week now. Yeah? Okay. That's agreed, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once per week. And then, uh, so next week, let's see what we'll do. And then the week after, I'm in Bordeaux to taste the 2090s. 19s mm -hmm. so maybe it's a nice idea to do a session from bordeaux talking about 2019 bordeaux by that time wednesday night i will have some idea about uh, about wines so i already tasted a little bit some samples that were sent home mm -hmm. um I, it seemed quite good yeah yeah, yeah it is yeah. going to be very exciting good. like have a live uh, 2019 tasting from bordeaux and we will be the like yeah uh, <laughs> you will get the first teasers from you about 19 vintage. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Thank you so much, Very Frank. Good. I'll see Thanks you everybody. on Wednesday. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Yeah. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.